Okay, quickly, think of something that has rings. Was it Saturn? Did you think of Saturn? Well, today we're not talking about Saturn. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Haumea, a very unusual object here in the solar system that we actually discovered not so long ago that seems to possess rings, and a new study that may have explained why it does. Let's talk about this and welcome to the Math. So, surprisingly, quite a lot of different objects in the solar system and also outside of the solar system have rings. For the most part, we think they're usually formed when an object that uh, is not super dense approaches the planet or any massive object, such as our own planet Earth, and then, due to the tidal effects from the planet or from that massive object, starts to slowly fall apart, as you'll see in a few seconds here. Eventually, this becomes a kind of a ring, normally a relatively long and well-shredded ring, that uh, may remain in this orbit for quite a long time. Now, in case of Saturn, we know that it's slowly losing its rings, but it'll probably take a few hundred million years for them to disappear completely. We also know that, very likely, most of the planets in the solar system at some point had rings, including, of course, planet Earth. But sometimes rings form from other means, and more specifically through a collision. And in this case, we're talking about a collision of an object with another object in the very remote regions of the solar system, kind of even past where Pluto is, which is, by the way, right here. Now, Pluto, as you know by now, is no longer considered to be a planet, even though in most of our hearts it still is. Pluto today is what's known as a dwarf planet, and it has quite a lot of partners um, in the same region of space. One of these partners is known as Haumea, discovered back in 2000. 4005. Here's by the way how most of these objects compare to our planet Earth. They are actually really really small. So what exactly is Haumea and why does it have such an unusual shape? Well, like Pluto, it's most likely a dwarf planet. But as you can see, it sort of also looks like a potato. A very very fast spinning potato that also has rings around it. A single rotation here only takes approximately 3 hours, or just a little bit longer than 3 hours, and because of this, this object eventually became so weirdly shaped. As you can probably imagine, if you were to stand on the equator here, you would feel a lot less gravity or basically attraction to this object as you would if you were to stand on the polar regions, simply because of the centrifugal forces due to the spinning of the object. And because of these centrifugal forces, Haumea eventually assumed this shape known as oblate spheroid. Now, we know quite a lot about it and we actually learned a lot more about it in the last few years because of one important observation that was done by the incredible and probably the coolest telescope on the planet, the flying telescope known as SOFIA, which unfortunately last year may have actually lost its funding, although it might still have a chance to survive. Hopefully this doesn't disappear though. Anyway, the flying telescope positioned itself in such a way that the light from a distant star passed sort of in front of Haumea and allowed us to analyze a lot of different properties about this unusual dwarf planet and also discover that it has rings, while also helping us see a lot of other things as well. Now, today we know quite a lot about it, a lot more than other dwarf planets except for maybe Pluto. And we even understand the type of a surface it has, the mass, the actual size it has, and a lot of other features we don't know about other objects. So for example here you can see that it has a very unusual dark patch, and this is how we were able to discover that it sort of spins every 3 hours, because this patch was appearing every 3 hours. We also know that it's extremely reflective. It kind of looks like a somewhat dirty snowball with a reflectivity of up to about 60 to 70%. Basically, it's a pretty bright object, but at this distance from the sun, it's still going to look pretty dark. We also know that it has two moons, and we know their orbits quite precisely, with the approximate orbits of these two moons looking something like this. Now, by the way, all of the names here are from Hawaiian mythology, this is why they may seem a little bit unusual. Haumea itself is the Hawaiian goddess of childbirth, and the names of the moons are the names of the daughters of this goddess. So, it's a pretty unique object and definitely has some unusual properties. And what's more interesting about it are the rings and also their location around this object. They're, as you can see, kind of close to it, but also seem to be really stable. And a lot of these unusual properties and observations can be easily explained with a single event. Um, 
really powerful collision. And in short, this is probably what happened. There was a collision between two relatively large and massive objects, and this collision resulted in, well, first of all, the accelerated spin of Haumea, which eventually turned it into this potato shape, and the particles that orbit around Haumea most likely first formed a really large ring around it, a lot of which probably ended up falling back to Haumea and most likely form unusual patterns on its surface, but we may never see those patterns, unfortunately, and some of them ended up basically rotating and orbiting around Haumea, forming a really large ring at first, with a lot of other larger particles orbiting around it. Now, due to the rotation, obviously the shape started changing and became the potato. Once it became potato though, it started to cause a lot of really unusual gravitational effects on its surroundings. And the computer simulations from this study kind of show you what may have happened within only a few days. So you can see that this is the particles around the um, Haumea, basically the rings, and only after one day you already see that there's this unusual formation that sort of leaves empty space in the middle. And with time this becomes more pronounced, and only after 10,000 days or so, it acquires this really stable empty space in between, with the ring particles only being right here and beyond. But there's also another line you can see right here, after which we don't seem to have any rings. So what are these two unusual rings that are formed in these two locations? The inner ring here is the so-called stable orbit ring. Essentially, within this ring, no stable orbit is possible because of the way that Haumea spins and dislodges everything around it. Whereas the outer ring is known as the Roche limit which for the most part is how most rings in the solar system are made. Roche limit is the effect of um, a relatively massive body on a smaller, less massive, or usually even less dense body. For example, in this case, if I were to place another object in orbit here, it will also start falling apart because it's within the Roche limit of Haumea. It will add to the rings eventually. But everything past the Roche limit is most likely going to be easily able to maintain its shape and not fall apart, which is exactly why the two moons of Haumea were able to stay in orbit and survive for billions of years. And so having rings for Haumea is somewhat unusual and in some sense lucky. The ring itself is only about 70 kilometers in diameter, meaning that the stability orbit and the Roche limit are extremely close to each other, and this is somewhat lucky for the object. It seems to have just the right shape and just the right spin and also just the right mass to even be able to have rings. If it was spinning any faster, it would not be possible at all, and also it would probably fall apart and turn into a kind of a dumbbell and eventually turn into two objects. But if it was spinning slower, the rings would be much wider. So quite a lot of unusual and somewhat lucky events must have occurred on Haumea for it to have the rings and also the moons. And at the same time, because it spins so fast, because of the tidal effects from Haumea, the moons are slowly moving apart from it and will eventually leave the system entirely, but this is not going to happen for at least a few hundreds of millions of years, possibly even longer. And there are so many more unusual things about the system that we've discovered that just don't really make sense at first. Like for example, for every three orbits of Haumea, the ring particles make one orbit around the object. At the same time, if you were to look at Haumea from top, it would appear to be around the same size as Pluto. But from this direction, it's only half as big. And this is super unusual. We don't seem to have any similar objects in the solar system, and this one is definitely one of the more unique objects we've discovered. And because we know that the moons of Haumea are moving away from the object, eventually the scientists will be able to calculate when this collision occurred simply based on the parameters and calculations that I previously mentioned. We don't really know just yet, but I'm sure there will be study that will figure it out. But you might be also asking, so why is it that the moons are moving away? Well, it's the same reason our moon is moving away, and this is all related to the so-called tidal evolution. Let me try to explain this in under a minute. So here's effects that our own moon causes on our own planet Earth. It creates these tidal bulges. Basically, our Earth sort of becomes a little bit stretched on two sides, one opposite the moon and one facing the moon. But our planet is also spinning, and it's spinning faster than the moon is orbiting around it. 
And because of this, the tidal bulges, instead of facing toward the moon, face a little bit ahead of it. And all this is of course due to the fact that the planet is spinning a little bit faster and so it gets to kind of shift these tidal bulges. Because the tidal bulges are now facing this way, there's a little bit more gravity pulling onto the moon from this side. And this gravity is causing the moon to slightly accelerate a little bit every single year. It actually makes the moon move a little bit away from Earth by about 1 inch or about 3 centimeters per year. While at the same time also pulling back on the planet and causing Earth to slowly rotate a little bit slower. Which is why billions of years ago, Earth too was spinning a lot faster, about 4 times as fast as a matter of fact. And so Haumea has the similar effect on its two moons and they're slowly moving farther and farther and farther apart. But all of this will obviously take a really long time, so this is not something we can predict right now. But this is not something we can learn about until we hopefully visit this object. And the scientists even calculated the best moment to hopefully launch a mission here. And we have about 5 years to plan something. In July 2025, if we launch a mission here, we can then use the so-called slingshot maneuver, or a flyby of Jupiter, to get enough speed to then go to Haumea. This is only going to be possible in 2025 and the next opportunity is going to be quite a while away. But even if we're able to achieve this, it will take 14 years to reach Haumea. Simply because it's pretty far away, about 50 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. But it is slowly moving closer and closer to the Sun because of its unusual orbit around it. So one day, maybe in the future, we'll get to visit this object, possibly even learn a little bit more about it and maybe even land on the surface and discover what it really feels like to stand on the surface of a really fast spinning object with unusual rings in the night skies and two different moons. But chances of this happening right now are pretty slim. Unless we go on a crazy exploration of the solar system. Anyway, on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to cover about Haumea. There are obviously a lot of things we didn't really talk about, but I think I've mentioned the important parts. It's a pretty cool object pretty interesting and has quite a lot of different things that we can learn about the solar system and collisions in the solar system if we get to visit. But until we learn more or until we discover some other unusual object that's even weirder than Haumea, that is pretty much it. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known, maybe subscribe if you still haven't and maybe share this with someone who loves space and sciences. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also kind of wearing right now. There's like a black hole here and it looks pretty cool. Actually, it sort of looks like this. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.